Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Kevin Zellman with your weekly voice recap right here on Q Hollywood for Get Real LOL. We are the place that will satisfy your television and pop culture addiction 24-7. So make sure you guys follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. Hopefully you guys watched The Voice this week, and I think it was one of the best live playoffs that The Voice has seen in a very long time. Also, make sure you guys stay tuned later on in the show because we have a very special guest joining us. His, uh, he was on Team Pharrell's uh, team. It is Mark Hood. He'll be answering all of your questions and telling us about his experience on The Voice. So starting off the night, it was Team Adams' Shelby Brown, and she sang one of my favorite songs, You and I by Lady Gaga. She took a country spin on it, and it totally worked. Adam said that if she did well, he would buy her a giraffe, which she's apparently obsessed with, and Adam said that she definitely deserves a giraffe. Amy Vashel yet again changed up a song and made it completely different, and yet again, it worked. She took on Taylor Swift's Blank Space, and all the coaches thought it was a great performance. And when I talked to Amy backstage after her performance, she told me how she and Adam worked together to change up the songs. Take a look. I mean, it's a whole process. It definitely is a collaboration. And it happened in um, rehearsal where like, I went through a few songs and he just, what makes him such a good coach is that he will not settle for anything less than the best. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this isn't right, this isn't right. And we finally, we landed on this song and you know, we whipped out the guitar and we're like messing around and gave the guitar to me. And I'm like, okay, maybe. And then the band started, you know, jamming in. It was, it was a really special moment. Do you have anything else that you still have in your pocket that you haven't shown America yet that you can't wait to show them? Well, you know, I feel like, of course, I have many things in my pocket. <laughs> um, but uh, the thing about this show is that, I mean, it's just making me grow in so mm -hmm. many ways that I think is, I hope as a parent, I mean, I know, I felt today, like I grew, like even in the middle of the performance, I was like, whoa, this kind of feels like a new sensation. <laughs> I kind of felt like I was able to just be a little more free than I've ever felt before. Jordan Smith made our jaws drop yet again. He took on a song that holds a very special meaning to him. He sang Jesse Jay's Who You Are, and he got so emotional once his performance ended. He told me why Adam thought this would be a great song choice for him. I was a little nervous, but you know, after the performance, I can't by any means say that it was perfect. I cannot say that. And okay, what wasn't perfect about it? There was so much, I'll tell you. But uh, <laughs> if you go go back and listen to it on YouTube later tonight, and you'll see. But there was so much that wasn't perfect about it, and that was you know that I would have changed had I had the chance. But in the moment, I just decided, you know, I should I should go for this. I'm standing here singing a song that's about being who you are and not being afraid to not be okay and not be perfect all the time. And so I might as well just put my whole heart into yeah. this. Adam actually was a huge part of picking this song. And um, But I think that the message is not only what drew me to the song, but it also drew him to the song as well for me. Um, he sees that that's a huge part of what I am and, and being proud of who I am and, and not being afraid to show myself in my music. Is, is such a big part of this for me and, and I'm, a, I'm appreciative that he understands that and that he you know encouraged me to do this song. Blake's team is I think one of the strongest this season. Barrett Baber took on the country classic Delta Dawn and you all know what I think of Barrett. He's a total country superstar already. He had his own vision for how he wanted this song to be and he told me how much Blake helped him with creating it for the voice stage. I think I really sh was able to showcase my creative side and show people that I'm, that I'm more than just a, a singer. I'm, uh, I'm a creative person who can come up with cool ideas like that. When you went into rehearsals with Blake, knowing the arrangement that you wanted and like the drums and all that, so how much was it a collaboration of what you wanted and what Blake wanted as well? Um, you know, it was my baby for sure, and, and I always thought that th there was a really cool opportunity to do something special with this song. Um, and that's the cool part about this show and certainly about being on Team Blake is that he is so open to those kind of ideas. And, um, and, and really in that rehearsal just sort of sat back and, and said a lot of times, I just want it to sound like Barrett wants it to sound. And I think maybe he, he recognized that I'd really thought this out and that, uh, and you know, that's the, a lot of time the most important uh, musical moments in a song are the rests or when silence happens. And, uh, and I think he really showcased that, that that makes him an artist too. Like he, like sometimes less is more. You got to know when just not to mess with something that's going to be cool. And I think he recognized that this was going to be cool and sort of just let me do my thing with the band. And, and that was, that was as helpful as, uh, you know, switching it up and, and making a bunch of notes himself. 
Emily Ann Roberts performed Why Not Me, and all the coaches loved her performance, and I think it's the best she sounded in, in the competition for sure. Blake even told her, this is a huge compliment, that she's going to be around for a very long time, not only in the competition, but in the country world in general. Next was Zach Seba. He got some help from Blake about how to pick out one girl in the audience and sing to them. He actually got down on one knee and sang to a girl this last week, and he told me that when he does this, he gets really nervous. Take a look. It's, it's hard. Uh, when I was going down to that one moment when I got down on a knee, I was thinking right before I was going to it, because the, 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 the pot of girls right there didn't know I was going to do it. And I started walking over there, and you just see their eyes get really, really big. <laughs> And just choosing them, it's you know, I get down on knee and I basically just stick my hand out and whoever it is, it is. Um, but it's just funny to see how nervous they get, mm -hmm. and it kind of makes me nervous. I'm like, am I am I like a monster or something? But it's just so fun to be able to connect with with people in the audience like mm -hmm. that. And uh, this song really allowed me to do that. Team Gwen's Corinne Bukowski took on Mandy Moore's Only Hope. Last week, Corinne was in the bottom two, so Gwen told Corinne that if she is hold, holding anything back, that this is the time that she needs to let it go and not hold anything back. And she didn't hold anything back. Gwen cried after Corinne's performance and got rave reviews from the other coaches as well. Brayden Sunshine took the stage with his slicked back hair again to sing True. And each time he hits the stage, you're able to see how much he has grown throughout the competition. But with this performance, I wasn't sure if it's going to be enough to keep him out of the bottom two this week. Jeffrey Austin performed Robin's Dancing on My Own, and it was spectacular. Blake made the point of saying how Jeffrey was once a was a one chair turn, and now he can easily win the entire competition. And I could not agree more. Jeffrey is my guy to beat. Team Pharrell's Evan McKeel performed Smile by Nat King Cole, which was his best performance to date, and that's that's just my opinion here. But he, it was his best because he was so connected with the song. Gwen said also it was her favorite performance of Evans throughout this competition so far. Maddie Davis sang a U2 song, Love is Blindness. So now last week she sang a song with a reggae spin to it, and this week she went a little darker, and Blake said that this was her best performance in the competition. I talked to them after they performed, and they told me how they want to go and do 12 more songs on the stage. These two are hysterical. Watch this. I got off the stage and I was like, there's nowhere I feel more comfortable than doing that. I'm doing this every day. Yeah, same. And, and I kind of, what I really, I felt like a weird, like, I want to go and do it again. <laughs> and um, that's never happened before because normally I'm kind of focused on like what the mistakes that I made. And, but I came off of the stage today and I was kind of just like, I can't believe it's over. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I want to do it again and, and, and again and again and again and again, and you know, and, and, and I think that ties into what Evan said is that I want to do it for the rest of my life. Maybe what we're finding is we really can't wait to have a two hour show where we do all 13 songs. Right? Right? I want to like, see that. Because honestly, getting off stage, it's like, that was awesome. 10 more? <laughs> 10 more? Can Anybody? I keep singing? Encore. Uh, Encore. Uh, right? It's like, there's no time, and it's like it's a Christmas special, and we just have NBC all day, and everyone just sings all their favorite songs. And there's no One clearance day. issues. One day. There's no clearance issues. Tracy Chapman will let me sing her song. Yes, what Prince? Prince. Some artists, yeah, Prince some artists don't like clear their songs. They they want to be the ones that sing them. For her, it's been Tracy Chapman, and I can't get a Prince song cleared. Tuesday night, we saw a performance by one of the advisors from this season, Brad Paisley, and Adam and Gwen both joined their teams for two great performances. Then we learned that the bottom two, based on America's vote, was Team Gwen's Corinne Bukowski and Team Pharrell's Evan McKeel. And to be totally honest here, I was very surprised with this bottom two. I did not expect them to be in. I thought it would be two other people. Uh, this is Corinne's second time in this position, but after two great performances with their Save Me songs, America's Twitter Instant Save decided to save Corinne Bukowski, sending her to the top ten. So this means Evan McKeel was sadly sent home. So now Team Pharrell is down to only one artist, and that is Maddie Davis. He was also on Team Pharrell, but joining us right now is Mark Hood. How are you? Oh, I'm good. You know, life is good. Um, I'm excited about my future. I've got so many opportunities since The Voice, so I'm, I'm happy. Can you talk about any of the opportunities, or is it still under wraps? It's still under wraps, okay. um, but just know that with my acting, I've got some great... Um, uh, television opportunities, 
theater opportunities. Um, I'm going to be doing some great things with music on YouTube and, you know, potentially some uh, continuations. Well, absolutely some work with Pharrell. So, you know, I'm excited about that. That's awesome. Well, I'm hoping that you actually do work, for, for work with Pharrell because that would be awesome. Um, I have a couple questions for you. Um, one is actually from a Twitter follower. So I'm going to start with her. Um, it's actually, it's from at Team Maddie Davis, so one of your fellow uh, Team Pharrell mates. Uh, she wants right. to know, sorry? I said that's right. Yes, uh, she wants to know, what was your favorite Team Pharrell moment? My favorite Team Pharrell moment absolutely was performing with Pharrell on uh, the results night episode that unfortunately I went home on. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, just rehearsing with him and performing with him, he's such a regular person and we had such a good time just arranging the song. And many people don't know that song, but I actually, and the reason we sang that song, because I brought it up with him one time, like, oh, P, yo, man, I love Justin Cloud Away. I was just talking about it. He was like, oh, that'd be a good group song. How how did it feel that Pharrell took your suggestion? Oh, man, it was, the crazy thing is, you know, I wasn't really suggesting it, so for him to do that, it was just kind of like, wow, this man kind of like takes what I say, what I say and kind of like really conceptualize it and thinks about it moving forward. So right. it meant a lot. That's really awesome. And then so, obviously you spent a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Pharrell. What was a moment that really stood out to you that didn't really make the show or wasn't really talked about that often? Um, about not doubting myself. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that I said, like, you can stop doubting yourself. Because if you doubt yourself, I'm gonna doubt you, and I don't want to. I don't want you to have to go home. So that just really meant a lot that he put that. That meant a lot that he would put all of that into me, and um, you know, it was a good moment. Um, what was the best advice that Pharrell gave you? Yeah, so I hate to use the same answer, but doubting myself, he just really instilled in me not to doubt myself. He's really not the coach who's like about technical vocals. Like he's not about you know the technical stuff. Mm -hmm. He is about, you know, the heart, the feel, and that is what's most important. Uh, were you able to get any advice from all the other coaches? I know some contestants say, like, when you guys are backstage, you're able to talk to your uh, the other coaches that's not your coach. What were they saying to you if you had that opportunity? Um, let me think. When I would always talk to Gwen, and Gwen would just always tell me, I love you, you're one of my favorites. The same stuff that she would say on camera, but she would backstage sometimes, she'd be like, don't lose that spirit. Like your spirit is what's best about you. And I, when I would see Gwen backstage, she would always tell me, oh my God, I love you, you're one of my favorites. It's because of your heart and your spirit. Keep your heart and spirit. And you know, I look up to hear that. What was your favorite round of the competition between the blinds, battles, knockouts, and the lives for what you were part of with it? What was your favorite? Um, battles, absolutely. Um, ain't no matter how it up with Celeste. It was just, um, it was magical. We knew from the moment we rehearsed that it would be great. So the battle was absolutely my favorite round. That's awesome. And then... Missy Elliott cry. Exactly. I mean, how does that feel that you actually made Missy Elliott cry? I'm telling you, I, I still can't believe it. You know, Missy Elliott is like, she a G. Yeah, I, it's, I'm watching. I could only imagine how it felt uh, for you. So I... Congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for having me, Kevin Zellman. Thank you. We'll see you soon, hopefully. Yes. That's it for us today. So make sure you guys are following me on Twitter, at Kevin Zellman, and Q Hollywood, at Q Hollywood on Twitter, because I will be posting behind the scenes and backstage pictures from The Voice each week. And when you tweet me, make sure you guys are using hashtag voice recap to be a part of the conversation. We'll be right back here next week with special guests from Team Adam, Blaine Mitchell and Victor Corrale. And as we all and as always, we will have exclusive interviews with the top 10 artists from The Voice. Thank you for watching guys and see you next week.